Fuck yeah, make some more noise. Make some more noise if you're ready for a live comedy show, guys. Come on now. There you go. All right, we're gonna get uh, we're gonna get your main host up here. Uh, he's the guy that makes everything possible here, uh, other than Buzz Bruce for letting us do our bullshit here. You guys get it ready for No Shark Robertson, everybody. Yeah, Sharks Comedy Club, how the fuck are we doing tonight? Hell yeah, the judge already gave me a zero for no reason. Security, get this fucking guy out of here. This piece of shit. By the way, that was the appropriate amount of applause as I made my way to the stage for a guy you have no idea who the fuck I am. I appreciate that. Thank you, guys. <laughs> what? Fuck no, my name's Noah Shark Robertson. I'm this guy. Dude. My was, name is Shark. That was awesome. Hell yeah. Greasy Gordo's right there. That's, that's my co-host. Yeah, Give it up for my co-host, guys. Greasy Gordo. Yes. We will be your uh, contest officials for the evening. My name is Noah Shark Robertson. This is my shitty comedy club. Thanks for coming out. <laughs> Don't laugh at that. <laughs> what the f... You're laughing way too hard at this shit. All right. Uh, it's going to be a good night. We're going to do a comedy contest tonight. We've got a bunch of comedians that are going to come up here and tell you their best jokes and try to win a cash prize and some trophies. Uh, you want to show off our lovely trophy that we bought on Amazon for $2? Yeah. Oh, yeah. We're going to do a $50 cash prize tonight to whoever wins. And also, whoever wins and the runner-up, they're going to get on uh, our showcases coming up very soon. So they're going to get a spot to do a booked comedy show. It's going uh, to be a fun night. Also, you guys are in for a real treat because one of the contestants that's coming up here tonight has never done stand-up comedy before in his life. Yeah, you see, you see this big party back here, this long table? So they call, a guy called me earlier today and he said, hey, we're part of a fantasy football league and whoever lost has to go on stage and do fucking stand-up comedy for the first time. So one of these guys is the loser and has to come up here and try stand-up comedy before all of you people tonight for the very first time ever. It's, Dude. The, it's the third night in a row we've had comedy virgins show up, literally. <laughs> three nights in a row. Yeah, we love comedy virgins. That's going to be hilarious. What would be even more hilarious is if he somehow won. If that motherfucker wins, dude, I'm going to suck it. I swear to God, I will suck it. Dude, hey, sorry about that. I've had a couple of white claws tonight. I'm going to get naked and fight somebody tonight, I swear to God. Probably this guy right here admiring his own tattoos. No, I'm just... <laughs> Hell yeah. He's like, I told you I didn't want to sit in the front row. They're going to fucking roast us. We're going to get roasted. You guys aren't going to get roasted. These guys are trying to win a contest here. They don't want to waste their valuable stage time on you motherfuckers. But I'll waste my stage time on you guys. All right, cool. So yeah, you got to know me. My name's Shark. This is my co-host, Greasy Gordo. We have our judges panel right here. Give it up for your judges, guys. Three delinquents. All three of these guys are comedians, and they also have a podcast that they do. It's called CATS, K-A-T-S. That stands for Kyle, Aaron, and Thomas Show. You guys need to check out their podcast if you want to uh, see a, a good comedy podcast that got a couple of these guys fired from their jobs recently yeah yeah that's how you know the podcast is quality you know what I mean it got them fired for their from their jobs holy shit it wasn't even because of the bad content their boss was just like man that podcast sucked <laughs> you guys are not Joe Rogan you're fired all right we're gonna go ahead and kick this thing off uh, we have the list right here of comedians that are gonna come up to the stage uh, but just to let you guys know, you guys are one of the judges also. So we don't just have three judges. The audience is going to play a part of the, in this as well. So we're going to call on you guys to uh, make some noise for each one of these uh, comedians. And we're going to judge how well they do based on how loud you get for them. Are you guys ready to do this? Yeah! Uh, one more thing real quick. Uh, there's only one bartender right now, and he's trying to serve all you guys. So make sure you take care of John, and you're nice to him. He's a great guy. He's working hard. Tip him. Take care of him. Yeah. Thanks to Buzz Brews. Thanks to Buzz Brews Deep Allen for letting us do this here. And uh, judges, are you ready? Let's get it. All right. Excellent. 
We're going to bring up your first comedian right now. Hopefully I can chuck some beers with you guys and get blackout drunk before the end of the night. And we have an open mic right after this. So if you guys want to stick around after the contest, we got open mic comedy going all night. So it's going to be a fun time. Let's do this. All right, coming up to the stage, your first contestant. Uh, he's a member of the Fentanyl Lollipop Guild. You guys give it up for Cody Bond, everybody. <laughs> Cody Bond! Ladies and gentlemen of Buzz Brews, how are you guys doing tonight? <laughs> hell yeah, hell yeah. Now, I'm aware that I look a little bit like an uh, unlockable character from Tony Hawk's Pro Skater or something like that. I've been told I look like I deal cocaine. I don't. I do it sometimes though, man. Uh, you know, cocaine's a pretty crazy drug, dude. Like, um, they say, like, if you want to get laid easily, like, easily, you could bust it out and be like, say, girl, well, fuck it. Like, she knows, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> say, girl, what's it? You can't do that with all drugs, though. You can't bust out a bag of heroin and be like, say, girl, you want to fuck? No. You can wait until she ODs if you want to, but like, that's on you as a human being, you know what I'm saying? No, no dark jokes tonight, all right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> excuse me. Um, yeah, no, it's, it is crazy though. Like, uh, there's one time this chick, I was doing coke with this chick, right? And she took the straw from me and she starts doing the line. I go, damn girl, what are you, a sea turtle? Cause you got a plastic straw way up your fucking nose right now. It did not make it easy to get laid, if you're wondering. <laughs> oh man, that's probably why I don't have a whole lot of one-liners. I never could do one line. <laughs> so anyways, I go to NA. Um, I've been sober now for a while. Um, appreciate it, appreciate it. It's been like a few hours at least. Like, uh, no, I, uh, I did quit drinking, man. Uh, I did quit drinking, which uh, being at a bar when you're sober, Dude, it's a lot like being at the Special Olympics without the sports. <laughs> Just a bunch of fucking retards running around. I love you, bro. <laughs> I go to AA sometimes, really. Like, I go to AA, but like, AA is depressing as fuck, dude. It is all DUIs and divorce up in there, dog. <laughs> Dead kids and shit, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, dude, at least I'm not making a Gaza joke. Like, goddamn. <laughs> But like, N.A., dude, N.A. is the shit, bro. They have crackheads? Bro, crackheads are awesome. You can't, like, that, you can't go to, like, Lithuania and find crackheads. That's, that's made in the U.S., baby. That's fucking, that's awesome, dude. Um, yeah, man, uh, I still do a couple of drugs here. Anybody, anybody here ever done acid before? Woo! Woo! I know these fucking guys have. Good Lord. Jesus, he looks like he cooks acid. <laughs> As it's wild though, man, so like I live in the middle of downtown, right? I live in the middle of downtown and uh, you know, one day I was like, you know what? I'm gonna take some acid. I'm gonna go check out all the museums downtown, bro. So I did. Art museum, fucking beautiful, dude. The Perot Science Museum, you guys heard of this place? Fucking mind blowing. The Holocaust Museum though, holy shit. <laughs> that, I mean like, I give it like a nine out of 10, you know what I mean? <laughs> JFK Museum, you're like, bro, maybe I was the other shooter, you know? <laughs> uh, but yeah, man, you know, I blame my mom, personally, like we all should, we should all blame our parents, you know, never take full responsibility, that's stupid. Uh, but like, my mom did weird shit, like when I was a kid, you know, one day she told me that like, she's like, Cody, if you don't get off the toilet fast enough after you take a poop, the poop will try to go back home. <laughs> you can tell me all your traumatizing stories all you want, that's real traumatizing shit, literally, dude. <laughs> Terrifying. Terrifying. I got her back, though. I got her back. I pierced my own dick in the bathroom when I was 15, and my mom caught me, right? And I had just gotten into drugs at this point. She walks in, she's like, what the fuck were you doing? Were you shooting heroin? I was like, no, no, it's not that bad. I just pierced my dick. <laughs> That's when I found out that sometimes your parents would prefer that you did heroin. <laughs> Uh, but, uh, you know what, I believe that, uh, I believe drugs open doors, man. I believe drugs open doors like when you're a kid and you smoke weed for the first time. That opens the door to what? Fucking better drugs, you know what I'm saying? You start doing like, 
mushrooms and ecstasy and acid, you know, opens the door to your heart, mind, spirit, that kind of shit. Meth, crack, and heroin also open doors. Like pawn shop doors, blood donation, plasma clinic doors, cop car doors, doors to AA. Anyways, my name is Cody Bond. Thank you guys so much. Cody Bond. Yeah. All right, Cody, stick with us. Yeah, you got to stay right there, but Stick with us for one moment. All right, Cody, you clocked in at four minutes and 38 seconds of your five minutes. How do you, how do you feel about that set, buddy? I think it's all right, you know what I'm saying? Considering none of you guys look like you have drug problems except for these fucking guys. Yeah, I was going to ask, how much ketamine are you on right now? Zero. I'm broke as shit. That's why I need a win, bro. All right, somebody, somebody buy this guy some ketamine, please. It's only like 100 a gram. He hasn't had a hit in about... Four minutes and 38 seconds, guys. <laughs> All right. Let's go to your, uh, let's meet your first judge. Uh, this guy goes by the name of Thomas Gunter. I like Cody a lot because he looks like my mini me that I created in a lab. And I like this <laughs> joke. I know you guys aren't all drug addicts, but I, I'm on the cusp, so I give him a six out of 10. All right. That's a six. Very nice. Let's go to your next judge. This is uh, Kyle Lamert. Lamert, sorry. It's all right. It's always, always a pleasure to hear you mispronounce my name. Um, Cody, an excellent set as always. Uh, I agreed. I, uh, I also gave you a six. Uh, I had a couple questions. Can we do acid at the JFK Museum sometime? <laughs> Probably, yeah. Sounds good. I'll book that. You said that you tried to pierce your own dick before. Oh, I, no, I didn't try. I did it. Are you willing to prove it? Uh, I, so, okay, all right, so, hold on. All right, all right, so He'll hold on, there's a little bit, real quick, real quick, there's something to add to that story, right? So like, this took a minute, like this is painful, okay? Like, so I get the needle through or whatever, my mom starts banging on the fucking door. I didn't get to keep the jewelry in, bro, I had to rip the motherfucker out. Oh. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> all right, what about you, Aaron? What are you, uh, what are you giving him? Uh, I love the acid holocaust joke. I really want to do that. And also, you did not have to tell us that you're on drugs when you pierced your dick. Seven. I wasn't. Nice. I wasn't yet, though. That's the problem. <laughs> All right. You got a seven and two sixes. That's a pretty good start to this comedy contest. Make some noise for Cody Bond one more time. And uh, let's get a let's get a pulse. Let's see what the audience thinks. If you guys think that uh, Cody Bond is going to take this whole thing, make some noise for Cody Bond. All right, yeah. You're like, wait, we have nothing to judge this on. We have no other, that's fine. You guys were like, yeah, okay. All right, thanks, guys. All right, cool. Let's get your next contestant up here. Coming to the stage right now, very funny guy. It's Jeff Jones, everybody. Yeah. How's everybody doing? Well, I see everybody got here in one piece because driving to Dallas is dangerous as shit. I don't know if you see these potholes anywhere. Like driving to Dallas, dodging potholes is like playing a furious game of whack-a-mole. You're just doing this. And you're, you know, it's sad. Every time I tell that joke, it reminds me when I was 11 and my uncle gave me my first hand job. <laughs> oh, I was right. He was fucking terrible, man. It's bad. He got way better when I was 15. I was able to tell him what I wanted sexually. <laughs> so I see the dark jokes are gonna work. <laughs> so I had to end my first polyamorous relationship. Does everybody know what polyamory is? Where you can be in love with multiple people and date them at the same time. It was really hard on my wife. Uh, she was really upset. She was like, I don't think it's polyamory if I don't know about it. That's called cheating. And then she had to add insult to my injury by saying that I don't think it's Polly if y'all are all cousins. Oh. <laughs> Man, these incest jokes are slapping. <laughs> Just like my grandmother's butt cheeks. Ah, damn. Uh, <laughs> so, so a little about myself. Um, I actually grew up in the poorest part of South Dallas, uh, back where people be eating mustard and butter sandwiches. Like... <laughs> We were so poor, like, my daddy had to keep all three of my sisters pregnant just to have milk in the house. <laughs> and when it got cold like this, we were, like, really prayed that one of them got sick so that we could cuddle around them and stay warm. 
no, the fucking incest jokes kill, and that's like, mm. okay, all right. So, I, I turned 48 this year. I am seriously, thank you, thank you. I am seriously losing touch of everything. Um, but I'm starting to look at things differently. And one of, like, to give an example, like paper towel commercials. Like, in the past, I would have looked at it and been like, who cares about paper towels? But now I look at it as, like, this is exactly why abortion should be legal. <laughs> like, these fucking kids making messes, all that shit. Okay, so a bunch of Republicans, too. Great. All right, thanks. Cool. So I'm also losing touch with music. Uh, I read a story the other day that Kanye West pulled out of Coachella. And my first thought was, like, I don't know who the fuck she is, but it's a good thing because he's got too many goddamn kids and he's running out of directions to name them. There's, like, Northwest, there's Southwest, and then that little weird-looking one. What's his name? Eastbound and Down. I'm not going to make fun of him because I hear he's kind of slow. No? Again? Okay. So, I don't really get reality TV. Like, has anybody in here saw that show Nailed It? Yes? Okay, thank you. I, I'm not going to watch it because I'm not really into church. Obviously. I'm going to let y'all sit on that and think about it. Uh, there it went. <laughs> there it went. So where are all my people with tattoos in here? Anyone? Everybody got tattoos? Has anybody ever given you shit for getting a tattoo? Your mom, okay, so next time do this. Like, just take her ass to church. I'm serious. Like, ask her, like, have you, have you read your Bible? And then when she's like, what are you talking about? Just tell them. It's like, Jesus had a tattoo. It's written in the Bible. John's vision of Jesus in Revelations 18, 19, it actually says, on his robe and written down his thigh, there is a name written. It says, Lord of Lord and Kings of Kings. Like, down his thigh. Look, I don't know if Jesus had a fucking tattoo. I just think he was bragging about being hung. <laughs> Thank you. So I'm going to end this on a positive note. Uh, my best friend Todd just got married. Uh, I'm a little disappointed because his husband's name is Todd as well. So I was really wanting to give him one of those really cool, like, uh, those celebrity names that people like Ben Affleck and Jennifer Lopez, they were known as Benifer. Or like when, uh, what was his name, Bill Cosby and Jeffrey Epstein, when they would hang out, it was known as R. Kelly. And so now, like, when I introduce them, I just, I, like, I had two Todds. What the fuck am I going to do with that? So I, I'm just like, ta -dods. It always sounds like I'm announcing, like, a gay magic trick. <laughs> Guys, that's it. My name's Jeff Jones. Thanks for coming out. Yeah. Make some noise for Jeff Jones real quick. All right, you're going to stick with us? Jeff Jones. Hey, thanks for fixing that, guy. You're welcome. You get uh, 0.1 extra points. All right, guys. This is Jeff Jones. Jeff Jones, how you feeling? I'm good. Thank you. That was a great set, man. I enjoyed Thank it. You. Thank you. Yeah, uh, for the record, I really appreciated the incest jokes. I liked it. Thank you. I think everybody wow. else did. Greasy Gorda loves a good incest joke. Uh, he has high cholesterol. That's why. That's why he likes that. Thank you. All right, we're going to go to uh, Thomas Gunter. Bro, I like this guy. He looks like he brings the donuts to the Church of Satan. Like, <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I wanted not to like him because I'm a Christian, but dude, those fucking incest jokes off the bat, slapping my, like, my grandma's butt cheeks is like, I'm, that's in my head forever now. That's an eight, dude. Fuck you yeah. had him All at right. the beginning like a motherfucker, dude. Thank you. There were some good ones. That's an eight from Thomas Gunter. What about Kyle? The Hail Satan shirt made a lot more sense after I saw your set. I appreciate it more. <laughs> I appreciate that. Uh, I gave you a seven. It was good. You had a lot of good pops from the audience. Uh, you kept everyone's attention, so definitely a good set. Thank you. What was your score? Seven. 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 Nice. Extremely entertaining. That was a lot of incest. <laughs> <laughs> you can't just have a little. I mean... I mean. It's like, yeah, it's you like can't just have just one. You can't just eat uh, one. Yeah, no, I, g I gave you an eight. That was hilarious. So. Nice. 
Thank you. Speaking of incest, our three judges look like the result of incest, so that's pretty cool. I, am I was Midwest. thinking the second one was like my before picture. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. All right, guys, give it up for uh, Jeff Jones one more time. Hell yeah. All right, so our next contestant was, that was supposed to come up to the stage, he's actually a blind comedian named Ali Nazari. He's having trouble getting an Uber right now because of the Dallas Cowboys game. So, so uh, we're going to go ahead and bring up this next guy who uh, lost a fantasy football league game. This is his first time doing stand-up comedy ever. Give it up for Matt Broly. How are we all doing tonight? Very good. So, like you mentioned, I'm popping my cherry tonight. Last time I did it, I uh, should already last a lot longer on here than I did last time. So, uh, and you guys are laughing, so I'm doing better than last time too. But uh, yeah, those are my friends in the back. They all are really good at keeping pretend football teams very well managed. I do productive shit, like sit on TikTok for six hours. Uh, but yeah, first time in Dallas. Uh, first time in Texas, actually. I'm from Chicago. Um, what? Home. I'm pretty hard. Might kill somebody in my own. <laughs> but yeah, first time in Dallas. All I knew about Texas was Friday Night Lights. Like, I, I honestly think, like, if you guys had a kid that fumbled the football, Tim McGraw is going to come beat the shit out of your kid. Tape that football and punch the shit out of him. <laughs> you guys haven't seen Friday Night Lights, have we? All right. <laughs> you guys have a good Christmas, though? Got some some fun? There we go. There we go. I had a good Christmas. I, uh, I went to go see Willy Wonka with my mom and my brother. Uh, not, not the movie, the play. The first ever play I went to. And uh, I didn't really know what to expect. I didn't want to really like it, but you know, here we are. I opened up the playbill beforehand. And there's an actor, you know, they have the actor and the actress's name pronouns at And I saw anything with respect on it as a pronoun. That is the most gangster shit I have ever fucking heard. I don't care what you call me, just have some fucking respect on it. Yeah. Woo! I went over to my brother, had a whisper, I was like, oh, blue, but number four is not fucking playing tonight. <laughs> shit. And best believe she fucking was not. Fucking middle of the song. Imagination. Somebody in the front row had their fucking phone out. She fucking stops the song, gets there. Fucking, what I tell you? What they say before the show? Don't fucking put your phone up. I'm not doing this shit anymore. Takes the phone, whips that shit right back into the song. Imagination. <laughs> this shit was gangster. <laughs> and I started thinking about it as I'm watching the show. Willy Wonka is like one of the most gangster fucking like films I've ever fucking realized. Let me take you through it. There's this guy head of a fucking organization. And he's got some snakes. He's got some snakes in his inner circle. So he kicks everyone out. And then just brings in a bunch of South Americans to fucking just run the operation. <laughs> and then out of nowhere, he just takes like four of the most popular kids in the fucking world. Like a Russian oligarch kid, fucking German kid, some like hacker like a TikToker. <laughs> and fucking kills them in front of their fucking parents. <laughs> and the South Americans are fucking singing about it. <laughs> <laughs> and then at the fucking end, he goes up to the poorest kid with nothing to lose. And he's like, you're fucking one of us now. <laughs> you, what you just saw, you're part of. He fucking just put this kid into a gang and this kid had no fucking choice. <laughs> That's all I had. Thank you, guys. Hell yeah. Stick with us, bud. Stay right there. What? All right, guys. I sensed a theme going on in his set. You guys can check out his Netflix special coming out soon. Uh, it's called White Gangster. Uh, Wangster, everybody. Hell yeah. Everything is gangster to this guy. Uh, Matt Burley, right? Yep. So is that the deal that you lost a fantasy football league and this is like a dare or something? 
Yeah, yeah, we've uh, been doing this for two years now, and I get last, but last year someone else got last, and he sucked, so I think I actually did <laughs> Nice. Actually, you know what? For, like, never having done stand-up comedy for the first time, that was actually pretty damn good, man. Yeah. 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 I've, been, uh, I've been running an open mic for years, and uh, I can tell you, that you are better than a lot of the people that try it for the first time. Dude. Yeah, you can usually yeah, you tell for five months. You can usually tell when someone tries comedy for the first time that they're gonna go kill themselves. Mm-hmm. I feel like you're not gonna do that. So it's wrong. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Where are you from? Chicago. Oh, Chicago. All right. Cool. Hell yeah, we got Chicago style food right in here at yeah, Buzz you, didn't, you didn't do that just for me, did you? No, okay. no, we didn't know you were coming. <laughs> I got a random phone call today about you. Uh, what do you think about a set, Greasy? I liked it. Uh, you said fucking a lot, which I like, but uh, yeah, if you want to keep doing it, like keep, uh, you know, just, I don't know. Use, <laughs> use, more, use different cuss words, you know? Oh, so don't keep fucking. <laughs> yeah. Oh. All right, excellent. Somebody, a lady over here came up to me and she was like, can you turn his mic up? And I was like, he doesn't know what he's doing. The mic's like five feet away from his mouth. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, let's go to Kyle. What do you think? Oh, I'm sorry, Thomas. I get these guys confused. They all look the same. Uh, <laughs> well, I just think it's a tragedy that King Von died in Chicago and this guy's still alive. But no, I'm just fucking. Like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, nah, no. Nah. I think that was honestly very good for one of your first sets ever. I mean, dude, uh, you were eating shit for a while, but the Willy Wonka joke brought it back. I really liked that one. I'm sorry, his table, but I still got to give him a four, dude. That's pretty good, though. I was gonna. He was gonna get like a two. The Willy Wonka brought it back. Be worse. If you are as bad at fantasy football as you are at comedy, I understand why you got last Amen. place. <laughs> just, just joking, of course, yeah. but I was honestly very impressed. You were calm, cool, collected up there. Uh, you did throw out the fuckings a lot, but I mean, you were able to speak clearly. We could understand you, and you got a couple laughs. So that's, I would say, a very, uh, very uh, successful uh, little set. Gave you five. Yeah, bro, that was fucking fun. I appreciate it. It was fucking gangster for you to come out here and do this fucking shit, bro. It's Fuck fucking yeah. awesome, dude. Fuck yeah. Hearing that many fucks from the starter character on Sims was cool. Uh, I gave you a four. Thank you. All right. That's Matt Burley, guys. The fantasy football league, dude. Hell yeah, dude. I like how Hotel California just started playing. That was weird. Hotel Chicago. <laughs> All right, guys, we're going to bring up your next uh, comedian. He's actually a very funny guy. He's a good friend of ours. You can see him all over DFW. It's Bill King. Oh, shit. (laughs) Thanks. Thanks, Thomas. You guys doing all right tonight? Enjoying the the show? First of all, I want to start... by by saying that I got into stand-up comedy because I, I was bullied a lot. No one, someone said yeah, and is nodding aggressively. Thank you, man, I, I'm, I feel hurt now. So. <laughs> no, but I, I grew up in Garland, and it's very diverse. Yeah, there we go, but every now and then, you'd have to get your ass kicked by a black kid. Right, and you'd like, look at me, man, I, I can't fight, I just call it getting my ass kicked. So, <laughs> I, I was getting my ass kicked by a particular black kid, though. They thought I said the N-word. I didn't. I didn't, ma'am. But I didn't. No, but I, I got a lucky punch in. Bah! And she had help. They all came out of the bushes, like that scene from Lord of the Rings, you know, that war scene? That, they, they flew at me from all directions, like that scene from Wizard of Oz and all the flying. That scene from Wizard of Oz. I got my ass kicked, guys. And, and I had to go to alternative school. Th- thank you. That's, that's another place where I get my ass kicked. <laughs> All right. Uh, I think uh, uh, another reason that I got into stand-up comedy was uh, my dad's racist. Does your, does your dad watch black movies and talk shit to the TV? Yeah. Yes, he said, yeah. <laughs> when, when mine saw uh, Nope, you know, I just heard him say, uh, can we get reparations? Nope. It's like, that's very racist, Dad. It's very fucking racist. He saw Get Out, and he was like, oh, you still want reparations? You can get out. And he, 
Jesus Christ. <laughs> Did you get hit? What the fuck was that? <laughs> All right. <laughs> the only one he seemed to enjoy was Amistad. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Okay, I, uh, it's him that's racist, you guys. Now everybody wants me to talk about how I got my ass kicked again. Isn't it? <laughs> okay. Uh, surprisingly, I'm married. No, no. You, sounds like you. When I said that, this man was like, how long have you guys been married? 17 years. Okay, I think uh, you're going to have an awkward car ride home. Is it? <laughs> what did that mean? Why did you say that? Am I going to have to go stay with my mother again? I'm assuming your accent. I'm sorry. That's it. <laughs> no, four years ago, I asked a woman to marry me, and, and she was like, I'll think about it. I asked, I asked her again, and she's like, yeah, I guess. <laughs> That's my wife, and she's at home being disappointed in me. <laughs> she, she looks like she's four different ra uh, three different races. I almost gave her a race. <laughs> Indian, Mexican, and, and Asian, you know. So it's good for me because I get to eat out at a different place every day. <laughs> Food's pretty good, too. So. <laughs> Oh, uh, shit. Sometimes uh, she treats me like a kid, though, man. Uh, it's like living with a, a public school teacher, you know? She tells me stories and gives me snacks, and we bang after documentaries. <laughs> yeah, it's, she hates me. <laughs> she fucking hates me, too. <laughs> uh, actually, I actually have a confession, uh, something that she's never heard. I feel like I can run it by all you guys. Uh, you know, see what you think. I have AIDS. <laughs> Aggressive applaud and a cough. I think uh, somebody else has. Spread it. <laughs> it's not me, man. It's not. Is that how I should tell her, though? <laughs> no, I, I do have. I do have HIV. She knows. She does. None of you believe me. <laughs> no, I, I thought when I was diagnosed, I, the the experience would be like you know Magic Johnson. Maybe I would play some basketball or be immune. It turns out it's just like Charlie Sheen, man. I just do a bunch of drugs now and nobody talks to me anymore. <laughs> Including my dad. He say shit to me, man. Uh, one, one of the drugs that I do is, is mushrooms. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, hell yeah. I know who I'll be talking to after. Was that you, Nathan? You, you do uh, shrooms during temple? or? <laughs> I took a minute. <laughs> How many grams are you on right now? <laughs> the, the other drug that I do uh, keeps the HIV undetectable in my blood, but if you look hard enough, you can find it in my cum. <laughs> what are you talking about, man? I, I'm on medication, Nathan. You don't know my life, man. You don't. <laughs> uh, I'll go, I'll go ahead and end on this. People, they ask me often, like, why do you want to tell people that you have AIDS? And it's because it was a low point in my life, man. But, but now, look, I, I'm here. Woo! Right? Doing stand-up in an IHOP. Woo! I have a beautiful wife and a son, you know. But, but what made it a low point was uh, I, I had to go to group therapy. And, and if you've been in group therapy uh, and met anybody, they're pussies. Right? They were complaining about COVID, right? Like, they cared about people wearing masks when they wouldn't even wear a condom. That was not the joke to end on, God damn it. <laughs> Thanks for listening to my weird set, man. Have a good night. All right, Bill King, hell yeah. That was a solid set, dude. I enjoyed Thanks. it. <laughs> Thanks so much. It is evident uh, after watching Matt Broly that you've been doing this for a while, you know? <laughs> Thank you. And I definitely know that your wife hates you because I, spe I spent Christmas with you. And she had, to <laughs> she had to pretend to be in love with you just to take a picture. He, he took oh, a my God. <laughs> he, he was like, lean in for a picture and pretend that you love each other. And she was like, <laughs> By the way, your, right. your wife makes the worst tamales I've ever had. <laughs> Wow. I will never tell her that. She'll stab me. And I'll be like, I never said that. He said that. And she'll be like, I don't care. All right. All right, let's go to our judges and see what they thought real quick. Hey, y'all give it up for Tragic Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> He's the only person to get AIDS from straight sex. Greasy got fed off vegetables. I, I got drunk <laughs> off water, guys. Um, I gave him a seven. You had him going for a while there. 
You had him. You lost him. It is what it is. That that to the best man. of us. That's a seven. <laughs> nice. Thank you. Hell yeah. Uh, I once considered you a close friend. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't know you were that racist. <laughs> hey, it's my dad. It was my Well, dad. I imagine that you and your dad like to watch Roots and root for the guy <laughs> with the whip. Oh, my God. <laughs> um, How did you know? So, <laughs> oh, so, no, 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 no. Uh, it wasn't a bad set. You got some laughs everywhere. Oh, yeah. um, I gave you a six, but oh, just yeah. keep in mind, I just gave the dude that has never done comedy before a five. So. <laughs> wow. The guy from the this Church is... of Satan said, oh, that's dark. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. Uh, uh, the Wizard of Oz joke, and it just made me realize that you're going to get your ass whooped here, and then oh, you're going to get home later by your wife, probably it's also. Story of my life. Uh, that was fun. Uh, I gave you a seven, and I enjoyed Fuck it. Yeah. That was awesome, dude. Hell yeah, oh, yeah dude. Thanks. Another hand for cats, man. Hell yeah. All All right. Great podcast. Uh, audience, what do you guys think about Bill King? Make some noise if you think he's going to win it. <laughs> All right, not bad. All right, well, that's Bill King, guys. Thank you. Hell yeah. <laughs> Bill King. We're going to keep it rolling. Greasy, who's next? Uh, up next, we have uh, somebody I personally have never seen before, but I'm sure they're going to be amazing. You guys give it up for Lonnie T. <laughs> Lonnie T. Oh, shit. There he is. That guy, that guy will definitely sell you cocaine. Uh, Gordo was here last month at this exact spot doing this exact thing. That's cool. I was actually a little trepidatious about doing this. Obviously now, since Gordo can't remember me, but also Shark also promised that we were going to nude wrestle. We didn't nude wrestle, did we, Shark? Not yet. You better not be making no promises you can't keep. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> this guy's serious. Bartender, I need another drink. <laughs> How you doing, Shark? I'm doing great, man. Nice tracksuit. Um, well, I appreciate you. Thank you. And then you made me go after Bill King. And his AIDS joke, yes. Bill, you have AIDS. Fine, Bill, you don't want to sleep with me. You don't have to keep on saying you have AIDS. <laughs> Daddy needs some medicine, just a second. All right. All right, how was Christmas? Everybody get something they wanted? All right, awesome. Who went, out? Who went back home, saw mom and dad? Yeah, what did mom give you? Did mom give you shame? <laughs> did she tell you how all the other cousins call their mom every Tuesday and you only call when you need something? Did dad tell you everything that is wrong with him? Showed you the pictures of his last colonoscopy? <laughs> and said, hey son, go pick up my Viagra because I'm gonna give mom some extra nice this Christmas. <laughs> Christmas was fun at my house. Uh, Christmas, though, was also, it's a weird time uh, for my household. About three or four years ago, my wife got diagnosed with breast cancer. And that's a weird, weird feeling when you walk into the doctor's office. And, you know, they go, hey, uh, she has cancer. And all these thoughts start filling your head, you know, mortality, death. You know, you're young. We were supposed to do all these things. But like that, the doctor looked at me and goes, we're going to do full reconstruction. How big do you want your wife's boobs to be? And my, wife, my life went from, hello, darkness, my old friends. It's good to see you once again. Two, I'm dancing on sunshine. Yeah, yeah, and it's starting to feel good. You notice how I didn't say breast, because breast is a weird word. If you just say breast, I want people that can say breast 
are perverts and British people. <laughs> you know, if, if a girl ever goes, do you want to see my breasts? I mean, I'm going to say, yeah, you know, show them to me. But it's going to feel weird. Because you don't know if she's talking about her boobs or chicken, both of which are pretty awesome. <laughs> Segway into my kids. <laughs> sent, my, uh, sent my kid to Florida to a soccer camp. And my other kid, I was uh, riding with her, and I was like, hey, could I send you on a plane to Florida, you know, away from your mom and dad? She goes, no, dad. I'd shit my pants because I'd miss you so much. <laughs> and two thoughts popped up. My daughter loves me, and then, damn, I'm a shitty parent. They just said shit, and they didn't care. <laughs> they were just like, that's cool. And it, but it also made me think about my other parenting choices and how... All of her friends wants to stay over, and I realized the reason why they want to stay over is I'm the parent that goes, hey, you want to go to McDonald's? So I'm basically a 12-year-old's drug dealer. But instead of weed and coke, I'm getting them McRibs and Happy Meals. Hey, but my kid's popular, so what are you going to do? Thank you. I appreciate that. Woo. Um... Going back to Christmas and family, my mom's, uh, my mom's really testing me. She called me the other, the other day and she was like, I can't pause my TV. She's a real country from Arkansas, so that's why she sounds like that. I can't pause my TV. And I was like, what do you mean you can't pause your TV? Stop asking stupid questions. I already told you the problem. And I go, what, you press the pause button, mom. She goes, what's the pause button? And the question is, how do you answer that? How do you answer a question everyone in Western civilization knows? How do you answer a question like, how do you breathe? How does the universe work? How do you sit there and press the pause button? And so I told my mom, it's because I invented it. Don't you remember? She didn't like that answer. And you know what? I know in about five years you're going to be uh, living with me. And... Uh, She's going to be asking me, how do I turn off the light in the refrigerator? All right, I'm Lonnie T. That's my time. Lonnie T. All right. I'm going to go ahead and ask the question everybody in here wants to know. Uh, why are you dressed like a gay Coke dealer? What is happening? Uh, it's, I'm Vanilla Ice, and I'm actually going for my addition, Vanilla Chubby, here shortly. So. All right, great. <laughs> Uh, that was a good set, man. What do you think, Greasy Gordon? Uh, I love your outfit. Your jokes were pretty decent, uh, but you totally went over your time. That's, uh, that's yeah. the only thing. It went about 30 seconds over your time, buddy. Well, you know I can't read. That's <laughs> 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 nah, all good. Uh, let's see what the judges have to say about this. Bro, you started out great just like everybody else, but trailed off a little bit at the end there. I know you look like Conor McGregor if he's addicted to milk and cookies, and <laughs> that's... <laughs> I gave you, I got you with the six, bro. Like, you started out good, though, but those last two minutes, man. So I wanted to apologize on behalf of Noah. Uh, I'm sorry that he has been ducking you for the naked wrestling. I have been in his DMs every day this week trying to get him to go to a gay bar. He's given me the runaround, too. He's just a little bit of a tease. He just, just suck, yes. It's all good. Right. Um, I also gave you a six. Uh, okay. okay. Definitely, got some, definitely got some laughs scattered throughout. Um, solid set, and uh, we'll go to Aaron. You're yeah, the best looking judge. I just want you to know that. <laughs> yeah, that, that does it. It was fun hearing a comedy set from the Coke dealer for the Miami Dolphins, so it was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, me and Mike Medano, baby, like this. <laughs> yeah. Now, you have great stage presence, and the delivery was cool. Yeah, I would say you could probably fit a few more punchlines in there as well. I gave you a six as well. That was fun. That was awesome. You got the devil's number here today. No, that, no that's for that. The... That's an insult. <laughs> nice. All right, audience, what do you guys think? Is he going to win this thing? <laughs> Hell yeah. He's got a. You got a. You got your own little audience over there going on. Hell I do, yeah. but I gotta go. I gotta go with the Chicago guy. <laughs> the Chicago are those guy your? Uh, are those your tricks? Are you turning all those tricks over there? Are you, a pimp? Are you a pimp? I'm asking if you're a pimp. Those, those are my female friends, sir. Okay. Yeah. All right. the, so those, are, those are your bitches. All right, cool. All right, guys. Gre we're move Greasy. On. He's dressed black. He's not black. He doesn't know what you meant. Uh, 
All right, guys, you're in for a real treat because the next comedian coming to the stage right now is actually our previous winner. So he's your returning champion of the Sharks Comedy Club Comedy Contest. This guy won a $100 cash prize last time. Uh, he was on Kill Tony recently, and he absolutely crushed. They asked him to come back. Uh, Kill Tony is the number one live podcast in the world for comedy. Uh, so this guy's going to be uh, back on that in a couple weeks. Uh, make some noise for your returning champion, Justin Hedrick. Fuck yeah. All right, so I'm going to try to hold the mo microphone a little bit closer. Uh, I got here a little early and had a few too many drinks. Turns out I'm a bit of a lightweight. Not so much on the scale or chairs. I've broken a quite a few of those. I didn't know I was going to be going against uh, having a competition against God with AIDS. It's, it's kind of rough to beat that. Uh, a first timer who did surprisingly well. Uh, probably the brokest pimp I've ever seen in a tracksuit. <laughs> Uh, but I'm gonna do my best. All right. So 2023 is just about over. It's been a, a year of learning for me. I've learned a lot of new things. Uh, one of those is that you can't look like me and refer to your drug dealer's neighborhood as the black market. <laughs> they don't like that. <laughs> I also learned that uh, online dating profiles, you gotta be careful. Uh, sometimes when it says thick, it just means that their dick is bigger than mine. <laughs> that happened one too many times. Uh, the, the best lesson I learned was that uh, you should never accept an invite to a gangbang without knowing who's getting banged. It, it definitely made Christmas at Grandma's weird and gave a whole new meaning to Grandma's famous cream pie. <laughs> Uh, so, I uh, also learned that my girlfriend doesn't like the way I roll a blunt. She said I, I roll a blunt like I fuck. Uh, according to her, uh, my finger technique is terrible. I never fill it up or get it wet enough. <laughs> and no matter how hard I try, I'll never do it as good as a black guy. <laughs> now, even though I have a girlfriend, I have a weird fear of dying in a gay way. Not like, not like choking to death on a cock, like the guy with AIDS. Uh, but, but more like choking to death on gluten-free popcorn while watching Brendan Schaub's Gringo Poppy. Uh, it's not really the legacy I want to leave to my kids. I do have a bunch of kids, and despite my best efforts, they are all woke. They're, they're so woke that every time I tell a trans joke, they won't talk to me for a week. It's been a year, and I'm just about out of trans material. And, and similar to a lot of the trans community, I don't have the balls to go back to the way things used to be. I do love my kids, though. Uh, especially this time of year we're coming up on. It's tax refund time. Uh, it's a good time to have kids. Last year at tax refund time, I, uh, I got my check and I went to buy a car. I found this black Dodge Challenger that I really wanted. And I went to the dealership and I got there and the car dealer was a racist. So I'm sure he looked at me and assumed I was a racist. I mean, I look like a racist. I could play one on TV probably. But uh, I got there and I said, man, I want this black Dodge Challenger. And he was trying to sell me on this white car. He was very convincing, like buy this white car, it's way better. And uh, I was trying to tell him, like, man, that black car looks way cooler than the white car. Like, I feel like I wanted that one. And he, uh, he just kept pushing, pushing towards the white car. He's like, man, this white car's safe and dependable. That black car's dangerous. I was like, no, 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 I really want the black car, man. I feel like the motor's bigger in it. He goes, whoa, whoa, whoa. The motor's just fine in the white car. <laughs> Nobody's ever complained about it before. It gets the job done. I was like, man, that black car is a muscle car. Like, it looks way tougher than the white. The white car is kind of nerdy. And uh, he was like, no, nah, it'll get you there on time. It's safe. It's dependable. So I seen what he was doing, and I had to get a little tough with the guy. So I told him, I said, listen, man, I want my car so black that every time it pulls up to a red light, 
the other cars automatically lock their doors. <laughs> I want my car so black that the day I get it, it's three months behind on payments. <laughs> About to get repo. I want my car so black that it gets pulled over in my garage and the cops beat the shit out of it. <laughs> I want my car's life to matter. <laughs> this, this salesman looked at me and he said, don't all cars' lives matter? <laughs> Fuck, you kind of got me there. So I bought the white car. All right, guys, that's my time. Thank you. Hell yeah, Justin Hedrick, your returning champion. Justin, how you feeling? Doing all right. Where do you live, buddy? Weatherford. Weatherford, how far is it? How far of a drive is that for you? A little over an hour. Holy shit! Yeah, fuck it. You feel confident about this? You think you're gonna take the win tonight? I tried a couple of new jokes, so I don't know. The car dealer joke was a little uh, iffy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I normally do more one-liners, so that one was a little bit longer, and I've never really done the back and forth with the jokes, like he said, I said. Yeah. Type shit. That was good, man. I enjoyed it. Yeah. Uh, that was five minutes right on the dot. That's right. What my do you think, Greasy? Uh, yeah, my car is black, and uh, now I feel a little bit cooler about that. Do you? And I just <laughs> to let you know, it, I, I want my car so black, there's always a pound of weed in the trunk. There you go. There yeah. you go. Hell yeah. You All right, want, well, we're going to go to our car our to owe uh, child support. There you go. <laughs> there you go. We're going to go to our judges. What do you think, uh, Thomas? Dude, this guy's a phenom at comedy, even though he looks like the guy that dies in the first season of Sons of Anarchy. I, I had him. Oh, shit. That's Season what I had. Three. I, uh, I had him at a 10 until that car bid, and now I got him at an 8, bro. But he still did very fucking good, especially how much this guy's done comedy. He's fucking good as shit. Hell yeah. I also gave you an 8. <laughs> uh, I also gave you an 8. Uh, you did a great job all throughout. Uh, really consistent with the laughs. Um, really good like writing and structure for someone who's been doing it as uh, short of a time as you. I'm excited to see what you got going and continue to do. Um, I gave you the eight. Um, a lot of it was because you realized that this crowd really loves jokes about grandma incest. That was good on you. You picked that up. I almost changed that to my aunt when the other guy did a grandma joke. But, you know, it is nice. what it is. Uh, you had me giggling my little tits off over here, dude. Uh, I couldn't stop laughing the whole time. I didn't even write any notes. I gave you an eight. That was awesome. All right. Thank you. That works. All right, guys. Uh, audience, what do you guys think about this guy? Is he going to win it tonight? All right. That's Justin Hedrick. Hell yeah. We're going to keep it rolling. All right. Uh, coming up to the stage, you guys uh, you saw that fluffy little haired 18-year-old supple door guy that was at the front. That's your next contestant. You guys give it up for Nathan Beeman, everybody. Beeman! Nathan Beeman! Beeman. Hey, Buzz Bruce, how are we doing tonight? So let me introduce myself. My name is Nathan Beeman, and I've been a comedian for uh, uh, not a long time, not long enough to make you guys laugh. But I'm a, I'm a recent graduate of the, 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 the high school public school system, um, and uh, I went to Allen High School. Do you guys know Allen High School? If you don't know Allen High School, it's the big football school. It's a big, long high school, two stories, efficient, uh, efficient design, and so we can jump. Um, I loved being a student there. I just graduated at semester. It was a wonderful experience. Um, how are you guys doing tonight? You too. You know, I love your shirt. Sir, what do you do for a living? You're a chiropractor? Can you give me your card? What's the like most deformed person you've ever had come into your office? Yeah. Are you one of those chiropractors that sells like pills that don't work? <laughs> it's okay if you're not. Like, okay, okay, good. So, who's the most fucked up person you've seen? A lot of different. You ever seen somebody with like six fingers? Do they need chiropractic help? What the fuck did they do with the finger? Uh, yeah, but you'd keep that shit. No. Yes, you would. You're not telling me that if you... I don't give a shit. I don't... You're... Yes. You're gonna keep that. 
I would wear that around my fucking neck. Like, like that's that's part of me. <laughs> How you doing, mom? You doing good? <laughs> it's good to see you tonight. Yeah, you're dressed. You're dressed very, very spiffy. Can the fantasy football league explain to me what's going on in Hamas right now? <laughs> I'm fucking serious. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> God. Oh fuck! Where'd he go? Right here. Oh, how you doing? What's going on, Beeman? Oh, you're so you're on the cusp of being a drug addict? Yeah, I'm. Close. What does that entail? I mean, I mean, like, what's your day to day? Uh, wake up at 4 p.m. Fuck yeah! <laughs> uh, so what drug a drug addict would wake up at five? So. I suppose. Yeah, you're good. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> so are you sober or not? <laughs> Psychedelics aren't it? Oh fuck yeah, but it's not it's not gonna be a relapse. Sorry. How are y'all doing? Why why are you sitting like this? You just chilling? Oh you're the Canadian, right? Ah his wife made sure he didn't give me his Canadian card. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck that means, but it's nice to meet a Canadian. What what's different about here? More guns? Did y'all see Dr. Phil released a picture of his house? He has an entire like gun room, like an arsenal. Why the fuck does Dr. Phil need an arsenal of weapons? I, I think he makes enemies pretty consistently though. Like I'm not gonna lie. Um, I love your set, sir. This is Hail, S I thought that said Hail Santa. Um, Hail Santa, Hail Satan, are you a Satanist? Yeah, active prac, no, you're not? So why do you market yourself as one? You don't, does it say Hail Satan on your... <laughs> it's on your shirt, bro. <laughs> you should be. If I wore a cowboy's hat, I'd be on the team. Thank you. Oh, yeah. oh, shit. I don't know football. My dad left. Um, so what else do y'all do for your fantasy football league other than force people to do stand-up? What? Beer mile. That's fu I'm 18. What's that? You're in a mile and after every lap you have to drink a beer. That sounds awful. <laughs> Fuck you guys. I mean, <laughs> all right. I'll leave you guys with that. My name is Nathan Beeman. Have a great night. Enjoy the rest of y'all's show. All right. Show. Nathan Beeman. Hell yeah. Nathan, how you feeling, buddy? I'm feeling awesome. In case you guys are wondering, yes, he just graduated high school like a few days ago. Seriously. <laughs> Yeah, that's real. I like how you abandoned your material and just started fucking doing crowd work. That yeah, was that insane. was pretty ballsy of you. I respect that. Like he you also, actually did. What's up? This wasn't a crowd work show, but you actually did pretty decent. Yeah, at crowd that was work. all right. This was the wrong time to do that, but Although, you did pretty good. It got awkward when he started uh, questioning the you know hail Satan shirt. I he liked that interaction. He doesn't understand jokes or irony. Nathan, let me give you an example. It'd be like if you were wearing a shirt that said Pussy Slayer. You know what I mean? It's, you don't have to take it so literal, man. <laughs> this, this guy's not going to fucking slay a goat later and fucking bathe in the blood, okay? Calm down. <laughs> I'm just kidding. That was funny because he's gay. Yeah. No. All right, Greasy, what would you think about his set? Uh, I, like I said, I, I thought you did pretty good, but like, this is definitely like the wrong time to do crowd work. But you still got laughs, like, you know, you pissed off a couple people, but you still got some laughs. <laughs> yeah, at one point I saw some lady in the audience going like, hmm. <laughs> All right. But well, hey, it was good. Uh, let's go to our judges. Thomas, what do you think? Bro, I love Beeman. He has like an aura of positivity. He reminds me of a young Jonah Hill. Uh, I've heard four different comedians describe him as supple. I'm not even, I gave him a five, bro. I went to piss during a set, full disclosure. Uh, Kyle, what do you got? <laughs> also gave him a five. Uh, Wild move to go crowd uh, crowd work in the comedy contest, but you, uh, you, sh you scraped through, did all right. Um, excited to see what you have uh, what you have coming next. Thank you. Aaron. Oh yeah. And this is also definitely Aaron. This is Aaron. Got to say you did pretty good. Uh, interesting approach to going towards the crowd, but yeah, you did well, man. Thank you. Give you a five or six. Oh, you got what the? That's Aaron. 
You guys thought that we Who wouldn't notice. Is that? I just went to go change. That's all. <laughs> you, guys, you guys thought we wouldn't notice that you changed one of the workaholics. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. All right, guys. Audience, what do you think about Nathan Beeman? You think he's gonna take it? The fantasy football league likes you. All right, Nathan Beeman, guys. Thank That's his guys. time. Sorry, I needed to put my doppelganger in real quick so I could take a leak. What the? By the, the way, switcheroo. By the way, Shark, uh, you got to remember two of us are unemployed, so we're the out of workaholics. Oh, wow. All right, guys, we got a few more comics left. We've got, let's see, one, two. We got like three or four more comics. Can you guys handle three or four more comics? Is that cool? And then we're going to announce the winner, and then we're going to kick off the open mic. Right now, coming to the stage, he finally found the place. He finally got an Uber ride. This is the blind comedian we were talking about earlier. Very good friend of ours, very funny guy, Ali Nazari. What's up, guys? Come on, you can do better. What's up? Woo! All right, all right. How you guys doing tonight? Everybody good? Woo! Ready for tomorrow night? Yeah. Fuck New Year's. <laughs> yeah, well, if you already knew I was blind, raise your hand for me. <laughs> How many people raise their hands? Please tell me. Come on, tell me, please. <laughs> yeah, I've been blind six years. It's been the best six years being blind. Yeah, you like that, huh? <laughs> yeah, being blind has got its, it's, it's a lot of fun, trust me. I can't read or write. Watching TV is impossible, I gotta listen to it. But driving's still a lot of fun. <laughs> My Uber drivers let me drive every time I ask them, hey, you want me to drive? One of them let me drive finally. I'm scared to piss out of them. And they usually get lost because they want to spend more time with me. I don't know what the fuck that is. But yeah, you know, being blind, you know, I tell all the ladies, hey, date a blind man. We never cheat on you. We never know where the fuck you are. <laughs> you, sa you save money on clothes, hair, makeup, all the shit you gotta spend money on. All you gotta do is shower, shave this area, and uh, don't get too fat. Because we still wanna hear the stereo when you sit on our faces. <laughs> really, you know, we like that too. Especially when you get older and eating ass, you know, you, need, you, want, you want a little bitty ass, not a big one. It doesn't flap in your face. You know, clapping that booty in the face, you know, that kind of hurts. <laughs> you know what I mean, right? He's laughing his ass off over there. Yeah. And also, you know, I tell all my blind friends, date a homeless person, because you don't, have, you don't have to look for their address. You pick them up anywhere. Drop them off anywhere. They eat out of anything. And when you're done, you just drop them off anywhere. They're homeless, so there's no home. Did I just say homeless? I meant unhoused. Yeah, that's a new PC. Fuck that PC word, right? Like, retarded people don't want to be called retarded, right? They want to be called mentally challenged American. Motherfucker can say those four words? He's not retarded. He's probably Korean fucking with you. <laughs> and also, midgets. I've had it up to here with those fuckers because, you know... They want to be called little people. Little people are, you know, like Filipinos and Vietnamese. You know, they're just little cute midgets with little butts, you know. And pedophiles want to be called Catholic priests. Fuck those assholes. <laughs> Any Catholics in here? You've been touched before, right? <laughs> Why is that priest? I mean, yeah. Also, uh, so uh, you know, when being blind, don't piss off your roommate. Like my girlfriend, she's a bitch. Because when I piss her off, then she, you know, she fucks with me. Like last night we get in an argument, this morning she's like, hey, you want some toothpaste on your toothbrush? I'm like, fine. She learned something last night when I cussed at her, I guess. So she hands me my toothbrush, I start brushing. Not toothpaste. Have you ever tasted Preparation H in the morning? Ooh, it's shitty tasting, literally. <laughs> Makes your lips all puckered up. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like. Yeah, like your butthole. Uh, <laughs> yeah, guys, um, and uh, let me just, just tell you guys a little story about what happened to me through in the drive-thru. 
So I have my Uber driver take me through the drive through and uh, it takes me a little while to order because I can't fucking see, right? So this bitch behind me honks the horn. And I'm like, oh my God, she's mad. So I put my hand out the window. I'm like, I got you, I got you. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, you know, I'm hurrying. I'll pay for your food. <laughs> now, not knowing where she was, I think I was talking to somebody else on the other side. But, uh, but I, paid for, I paid for her food. I paid for my food, got both receipts, went to the next window, got my food, gave him her receipt, got her food, flipped her off, and we just left. I was like, fuck you, bitch. Now you go wait in line again. Because that's what an old man does. Thank you, guys. My name is Ali Nazari. You guys have been great. Thank you so much. Ali Nazari. All right. Ali, stick with us for one moment, sir. Skip with you? No, stay right there. Hang out with us oh, for a minute. Okay. How you doing, Ali? Yeah. Uh, what's it like being Joe Rogan's dad? Uh, fuck Joe Rogan, he's only six years younger than me. I'm his older brother, I kick his ass. No, that was a great set, man. We love you. You're a good friend of ours. Uh, Greasy Gordo, what do you think about this guy? It was well worth the wait for you to get here. That was, that, that was amazing. Thank you, thank you. All right, let's see what our judges thought real quick. To your very right is a panel of judges, Ali. Over here? Yeah. I I just want to say I don't think he's actually blind. Uh, he's hit me with that Inspector Gadget cane directly in the penis like double digit times, and my penis is not that big of a target, guys. So that's why I gave him a seven. <laughs> it would have been an eight, but he's touched my penis more than enough times. I am going to hit you again. <laughs> a seven. I also gave him a seven. I was hoping that that would keep me from getting hit. <laughs> Uh, I'm also giving you a seven because I was going to give you a six and then you said you were going to hit him, so now I'm going to give you a seven. <laughs> as soon as I find you three assholes, I'm going to hit you. All right, he's got three sevens. Audience, what do you guys think about Ali Mazzari? Very nice. That's a pretty good reaction. All right, guys, that's Ali Mazzari. Thank you. Hell yeah. All right, so we had a guy uh, that was coming from oklahoma his name's wayne morris is he in the building at all is wayne morris here all right he's just he's disqualified fuck that guy what bill is rushing to the state oh he's gonna go help ollie <laughs> ollie's back there wandering around right now <laughs> hell yeah all right we're gonna skip wayne morris that means we've got Three co comedians left, unless one of these other guys isn't here as well. We're going to go ahead and uh, go to this guy that's, I think, sitting right in the front row. Uh, your next contestant is Muhammad Mercy, everybody. Yeah, yeah thanks, guys. You guys are a beautiful couple, by the way. You guys. <laughs> it's okay. I'm not going to molest you guys. <laughs> Are you, uh, are you Vietnamese? You are, right? Fuck, I'm good, dude. You're Middle Eastern, right? Yeah. You see, I'm so good at guessing people's ethnicities, dude. I'll do it again. White, white, gay. <laughs> Fuck yeah, dude. <laughs> no, you are, you are. You just, you, you just haven't been activated yet. I'm just not activated. Come, come see me after the show, bud. I'll get you going. I'll get you going. No, I'm not, uh, sir, you're a gay scientist, right? That's what you said, right? Because, like, I'm not gay, but I'll put a dick in my mouth for the right reasons. You know what I mean? No, I will. I will. What did Jesus say? Never say never? You just never know. Dude, I'm trying to buy a fucking house right now. Do you know how expensive interest rates are? I will suck somebody off to lower the interest rates, dude. A banker, a Jewish person, anybody, guys. So when I have a son and he's living in my house, he'd be like, Dad, Dad, Mom said you got this house by getting on your knees and praying to God. I'm like, well, son, I did get on my knees, but uh, God wasn't there, unfortunately. God was not there. Uh, I was looking at uh, I was looking at my naked body the other day as one does, <laughs> and I was just like, none of this makes any fucking sense, dude. Like this shit does. This is. It, I just look. This, I just look like I was made out of mismatched parts, like a fucking child drew me. Like why do I have wide ass hips, dude? Like what the fuck is this shit? 
I look fucking sassy, dude. Somebody told me, they're like, oh my God, you have really wide birthing hips. I'm like, great, yeah, I wish I could have babies. If I could have babies, dude, with hips like these, I'd pop kids out like a fucking t-shirt can and like (laughs) 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 fucking catch them and shit. Um, I have fucking inch long eyelashes, like what the fuck do I need these for, dude? White women coming up to me, oh my God, I love your eyelashes, can I have them? Can I do that to y'all? Oh my God, I love your pussy lips. They're so plump. I feel like a woman made me, like woman God, you know what I mean? Like give him inch long eyelashes. Oh, we're out of inches. That's okay, take one from his dick, put it on his eyelashes. Oh, this is going awesome. Oh, I love you guys. Uh, no, I need, uh, I need women to clean my house. No, I, seriously, like, I need women to clean my house. Miss, would you like to help me clean my house? Oh, yeah. yeah? No, no, seriously, you don't actually have to do anything. Just tell me you're coming over to my house, and I'll clean the fuck out of my house, dude. <laughs> if there's, like, pussy on the horizon, I turn into Mexican Cinderella. I'm just, like, fucking cleaning. I was cleaning my house, dude, and I was like, what the fuck? Is-? I was like, why is there cum on this part of the wall? That's weird. <laughs> No, because I usually, when I make love to myself, it's on this side. So I was just like, how the, f- hello, sir, would you like to, like, I, I, was, I was like, how did, it doesn't make sense that, I think that my house is haunted, man. There's some, like, sort of, there's like a jizz demon or a fucking, like a semen spirit or something. It's like, oh, oh my God, what is that? Oh, that's Jeffrey. He's like a cum Casper. It's okay. Cum Casper. He's fine. <laughs> There was a, I remind you, there was a school shooting, the Uvalde school shooting, you remember that one? The, the guy shot his grandma, right, and then went to the school and shot everybody. And uh, it's fucked up, and people are blaming the cops, people are blaming, you know, antidepressants, society. You know who I blame? The grandma, dude. How the fuck are you gonna let your grandson shoot you in the face? If that little kid was black, that school shooting would've never happened, bro. Never. Demetrius. Oh, I know you're not pointing that gun at my face, Demetrius. You better put that motherfucking gun down. Come here, Demetrius. What's wrong, baby? Are you sad? Go see that big ass white girl. She'll suck your dick. Hey, thanks, guys. Muhammad Mercy, everybody. Muhammad, what's going on tonight, buddy? Everything, buddy. What size shoe do you wear? Size holy fuck? Dude. <laughs> what is happening? Size 14, 5-inch dick. No correlation. <laughs> no cor- it's an inverse relationship. Some of you are retarded. That means opposite. How long have you been doing comedy, Mohammed? I like eight months. Eight months? Yeah, yeah. Holy shit. This is my first time seeing you, and uh, I, I think you're fucking hilarious, dude. Oh, thanks, man. What do you, do you think, Gracie Gordon? I've seen your set before, and you just keep getting better every time I see you. Oh, thanks, buddy. Um, thanks. Just if you could do me a favor and make those birthing hips a little bit wider, I would appreciate that. For you, I love you, buddy. All right, All right let's go to our judges. Thomas, what do you think? I just want sir, to... Sir, you kept distracting me. You kept humming the N-word in your head, and it was, it was so distracting, dude. Oh, I was saying it out loud, but anyway... No, you had uh, a good rhythm going, though. <laughs> no, uh, I just want to thank you for switching outfits with me before the show. That was very kind of you. <laughs> Uh, I gave him a fucking 9 out of 10. Like, a lot of y'all weren't along for the ride, but I fucking was, dude. That shit had me fucking howling. Yeah! Nice. Fuck yeah! <laughs> All right. You definitely had a lot of laughs uh, throughout the set. It was good, consistent. Uh, I gave you a 7. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing you more around, though. Uh, seeing what else you come up with. Is this the most exercise you've done standing up to announce what the... <laughs> I'm so I'm proud of you, buddy. This fucking number again, dude. You're squatting. Uh, First of all, you got the Midwest Dad's Ones on with the fucking comedian tech suit. Canadian, sure. Canadian tuxedo sure, you're trying sure. to go for there. Sure. Don't you have to get back to your job at the vape shop, bro? Ah, oh, dude. That would be so much better of a job than what I actually do. Yeah. Uh, I'm not gay, the only time, but I do feel you on the. On oh, you don't know that. Cleaning the house. <laughs> wait, uh, till you, wait till you go in my mouth, buddy. I'll, oh, I'll change your sexuality immediately. But I'm with you, though. The only time I uh, wash my sheets is when my girlfriend comes over. Yeah. Uh, I gave you an eight. So yeah, nice. good job, dude. That was awesome. That's hilarious. I like I like how the judges are trying to compliment him, and he's just fucking flaming them, roasting the shit out of them. My fat brother betrayed me. Hey, thank you guys. All right, audience, what do you guys think about this guy? 
All right, that's Mohammed Mercy, everybody. Do we have Busco Jones in the house? Is Busco Jones here? No Busco Jones? I can't believe he didn't show up. All right, yeah. So I guess that means we've got one more comedian, and we're going to close this fucking comedy contest up. Your final comedian of the night goes by the name of Paxton Bailey, everybody. Paxton Bailey. Thank y'all so much for sticking around. And then uh, also, y'all give it up for big, medium, and small over here. Isn't this great? It's our own little Mo, Larry, and Curly. Uh, I'm just waiting for someone to get poked in the eye and then so I can join in. I like the chaos. So uh, I'll go ahead and address this now. Yes, I do look like if Hank Hill switched up from propane to cocaine. And I don't like when that joke does well, so thanks for playing along. Um, yeah. Yeah, I had someone tell me the other day that I re reminded them of the show King of the Hill. I was like, oh, cool, like a little Bobby Hill or something? Is that what's going on? They're like, no, just the show. <laughs> what the fuck does that mean? I think they just found a colorful way to call me a dumb redneck. Like, that's all that was. And, you know, they're only kind of right. Like, I am dumb, but I'm not a redneck. I'm what you call y'all alternative. That just means I own a pair of boots, but I might go cry in my car to My Chemical Romance later. So, yeah. Yeah, I found out I was the alternative at a place called Tarleton State out in Stephenville. Have y'all heard of that college? Yeah. yeah, there's a couple things about this place that I hate so much. Uh, it should burn to the ground, first thing. Like, for example, out of 1,600 points on the SAT now, you get 400 points for putting your name on the SAT. And you need 700 to get into Tarleton. It's just a bunch of light pole liquors down there, honestly. It really is. It's crazy. I should not have gotten an academic scholarship. I do this for fun. That's not a testament of being intelligent. A couple other things I found out at Tarleton. You're going to meet a couple people that are just characters. Like, I actually unironically know three people named Cletus. And I'm friends with two of them. And I am ashamed of that. I know that. They're Cletus and Smart Cletus, which is an oxymoron. And I and the dumbass that listened to them. Smart Cletus said one night, hey, let's drink an entire handle of whiskey and then go ride a mechanical bull. And I accepted. Yeah, I'm a fucking idiot. I'm a fucking idiot who drank way too much whiskey, but that saved my life because I dislocated, that, uh, I dislocated my shoulder on that bull. And uh, fun fact, I didn't know. I had to be told that my arm was swinging from its socket. Yeah, that's how fucked up I was. So someone had to drive me to the only hospital in Stephenville, which feels like a trap. And uh, as soon as I finally got in, I got to my doctor, and I immediately started berating him because I saw two things. First, he got his medical degree from Tarleton. That's not who's going to fix me. Fuck that. Not a chance. And also, my fucking doctor had a goatee. I don't know about anyone else, but as soon as you get your medical degree, dickhead, shave that off. You look like you're touring with Hoobastank. What the fuck is going on? And I'm sitting there berating him, and finally he stops me and says, do you want the pills or not? And I said, yes I do, thank you, Dr. Cletus. I will drive 99 minutes for sniffles now. It's amazing. This guy is incredible. He's a medical doctor, and he likes to play jokes. Like uh, one time when I was in there, he fake handed me his prescription pad and said, ha ha, psych, I gotcha. That's like half a felony, I'm pretty sure. I'm not entirely sure, but that's crazy. And I was just fucking around, I'm like, that's fucking, you wanna come party with me and my friends as a joke? And uh, he accepted. You've ever partied with a doctor before? It's pretty fucked up when your doctor chugs a beer and then tells you you need to stop drinking so much. It's ridiculous. But a uh, little more about me. I just recently found out that my mom suffered from postpartum depression after giving birth to me, which, you know, is a lot to hear. Because, you know, I'm 23 years old. I, she'd never told me anything about this in my life. She's a real saint for that. And uh, when she was telling me for the first time, she got emotional. And I'm not from, like, a supportive family. That's why I do this for fun. Um, I'm begging for approval right now. This is what this is. Uh, yeah. So I tried to make it better, and I just made it so much worse. So I started, like, patting her on the head, and I just said, hey, 
Stop. And I tried to make it better, like I said, and uh, all I said was, hey, you know, there's silver linings to everything in life, Mom. Like, even with postpartum depression. Like, without your postpartum depression, I don't think I would have learned to swim. All right, I'll go ahead and end on this one. Uh, I recently realized understanding how to please a woman is a lot like understanding Japanese. I don't. All right, thank you all so much. My name is Paxton Bailey. Thank you all so much for coming out and sticking around. This has been a great show. You all are a beautiful audience. All right. Paxton Bailey. Paxton, what's the damn deal? What's the damn deal? Um, I probably need to talk to my therapist again. I need to re-up on that. <laughs> Hell yeah. Uh, Paxton's a good friend of ours. He does a lot of our shows. He's a funny boy. He looks sweet and innocent, but he's got a dirty mouth on him. That was a great set, man. I appreciate it. Thank you so good much. Good stuff. What do you think, Greasy? How do you do? I'm a little, <laughs> God damn. He I'm a little sighed. disappointed. You're a little disappointed? I've seen you do much better before. And uh, yeah. just the fact that the, the last competition I saw you in, you got kicked off 30 seconds in. I know, dude, you shook me. You stood I, up I earlier you were, yeah. and your tits were shaking and it hypnotized me. It just fucked Maybe up my Maybe that's what I should have done tonight. But you, I'm got, kidding. you got kicked off of a comedy contest 30 seconds in? 90 seconds in. Oh, 90, 90 seconds in. Was that at Dallas Comedy yeah, Club? Yeah, Dallas Comedy Club. Was it because of a dirty joke? Kinda. Can I do the joke real quick? Yeah, I want to hear. Okay. Well, this does not count so towards it's the contest. A, it does not count towards the <laughs> I contest. I just want to hear this. I just need a judgment call. Do y'all think Michael J. Fox's wife is brave enough to ask him to get her a soda? See, that's the kind of shit you should have said during your set, bud. We're not allowed to talk. We're not allowed to make fun of Parkinson's. I know. We're not allowed to make fun of Parkinson's, and I'm not allowed to be told by a gay guy that he wants to blow me. So that's why DCC kicked me out. Jeff, you got kicked off that show too. Jesus, <laughs> brother. Was your joke worse than that? It pr it probably was. You're wearing a shirt that says Hell Satan on it. He's talking for a long time. You're not allowed to say tits or make fun of Parkinson's. All right. All right. Hey. You also made fun of Parkinson's? No. Oh. Hey, by the way, I just want to say this since we're having this conversation. Dallas Comedy Club is a fine establishment. And Great establishment. Not, I can't get kicked out of any more clubs. Yeah. I mean, every different comedy club has different standards and rules and procedures. Uh, here at Sharks Comedy Club, we don't give a fuck, dude. Yeah, but no, no, DCC is great, man. You guys should go check them out. They're an amazing club. Um, yeah, let's go to the judges. I was going to say, we have to let's change the subject. Robert and Fatbert over here. Um, <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. I love Paxton Bailey, and not only because he bought me a beer before this, but because he looks like the wiener dog of twinks. Uh, <laughs> I went ahead and gave him a 7 Why out of 10. Why does everyone dude. call me a twink, God damn it? You look like one I didn't even say the Faxton joke. Like a twink that got stuck in the Willy Wonka taffy machine, dude. Uh, the crowd wasn't feeling you, but I thought you did really well. It was all very clear, concise, uh, solid punches throughout. I also gave you a seven, um, but yeah. Thanks, Thanks, Sugar Bear. I love you. Hell yeah. Well, I guess I'm going to play Simon Cowell on this one. That one hurt until, <laughs> until the, uh, the postpartum depression joke. That was hilarious. I love that. I yeah. gave you a five. Thanks, bud. All right. Next That's time I'll come up here and do a minute of comedy. That'll yeah. be a whole yeah. lot better. Uh, audience, what do you guys think about Paxton Bailey? All right. All right, that's Paxton Bailey, guys. All right, real quick. Can you guys uh, give yourselves a round of applause for being an amazing, amazing audience? Dude, you guys kick ass. Thanks for coming out on a Saturday night and making this awesome, dude. This comedy contest would have sucked balls without all of you. Seriously, you guys are great. This has been a great time. I had a lot of fun. Did you guys have fun tonight? Hell yeah. You guys ready to find out who the winner of this thing is? Hell yeah, dude. Uh, first, before we move on to the winners, I just want to give uh, some props to our panel of judges here. We got Thomas Gunter, we got Kyle Lamert, and we got Aaron Maxwell. 
Uh, again, they're the, they're the trio from the Cats podcast, K-A-T-S podcast. Look it up. Kyle Aaron Thomas Show. And uh, also, I want to give a shout out to my co-host, Greasy Gordo, for doing absolutely nothing. No, I'm just kidding. He's, he's great. Hell yeah, buddy. All right. That's what I expected. All right, cool. Uh, like I mentioned, we're going to have a, a comedy open mic right after this. So literally right when we get done, we're going to have a bunch of comedians that signed up come up here and tell some jokes. Uh, yeah, let's do this. I'm going to announce the winner. Can you make some noise for me before I announce this winner? Come on. Are you still with us? <laughs> Hell yeah. No, not yet, but. All right. Cool. So, uh, we got a $50 cash prize right here, and we've got this beautiful $2 trophy that I got from Amazon.com. Uh, but I am going to need some audience participation with this next uh, bit here. Also, I'm going to chug a beer real quick. Are you guys uh, drinking? Who's drinking? You guys drinking? That Matt's drinking. Was it Matt? All right, yeah. The Fantasy Football League is drinking. You guys are drinking martinis and shit. You're all fancy. Hell yeah. I've never had a martini. I'm not fancy. Even though I'm dressed like I'm permanently on vacation. <laughs> all right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have a little sip of beer real quick. Damn, I'm wasted. Paxton's over there trying to alter the scores right now. I deserve the win. All right. So uh, we have a tie. And we're going to bring both of these guys up here, and the audience is going to decide who wins. We've been keeping score, and uh, there's a lot of uh, 19s on here, 23, 20, 18. But both of these guys scored a 24 from the judges' score and the audience and everything, me and Greasy. Both of, you, both of these guys got a 24. So let's bring up uh, your two contestants who are in the running to win this thing. Uh, the first one is Mo Mercy. <laughs> Mo Mercy with a score of 24. Hell yeah. Good shit, man. That was awkward. <laughs> that was awkward. All right. And the next guy, uh, hopefully he's still here, Justin Hedrick, your returning champion. Is he not here anymore? There he is. He already knew. <laughs> Did you already know that was going to happen? Huh? Is it? Yeah, no, I heard you. <laughs> okay. All right. Very nice. All right. These are your two, uh, these are your two guys uh, that are in the running to win this thing. Uh, I, I, I need your audience participation more than ever right now. You guys are going to determine who gets the cash prize. Let's go ahead and go with, I want to make some noise. All of you guys in the audience, four. Mo Mercy, if you think he's going to win this thing. All right, not bad, not bad. Now, what do you think about the returning champion, Justin Hedrick? We're going to do one more? All right, I need you guys to pay close attention. You're going you're gonna to be the ones that are going to call this, and Greasy, too. Uh, all right, one more time for Mo Mercy if you think he's going to win this thing. All right, what about Justin Hedrick? I think our returning champion is going to take it again. What do you guys think? Is that the right call? You know what? That's fine, man, because they both did amazing. I'm going to go ahead and give Justin his uh, $50 prize here. Here's your trophy, Justin Hedrick. And here is your... Dude, he's trying to give... He gave him 20 bucks. That's amazing. They're going to both go do heroin right now. They're going to both go do heroin. All right, here's your... Uh, we're going to give you a runners-up trophy. Uh, number one and number two, Mo Mercy and Justin Hedrick, guys. Hell yeah. That's very nice. Let's get a picture. Let me get in between you guys. Somebody take a picture. Oh, she's got it right there. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. You guys are awesome. Good shit, man. Shout out to all the comedians that came out tonight. You all did really good. You guys crushed it. Cody Bond, Bill King, everybody else. You guys are amazing. Jeff Jones. 
I can't name everybody. I can't remember all you motherfuckers. What's up? Yeah. Matt, dude, the fantasy football league guy. That was actually a really good first time, dude. Lonnie T. Lonnie T? Lonnie T, the fucking coke dealer. Looked like he was straight out of Miami. That was crazy. Paxton Bailey. Uh, all right. Well, we had a couple people not show up. We had a bunch of people that were very funny that showed up. Shout out to the judges. You guys are awesome. Greasy Gordo, Buzz Bruce, Deep Elm, our fabulous audience. Thanks for coming out to Sharks Comedy Club.